To make this photo pendant, the first thing you need is a bezel pendant. Ours is shaped like a heart and it's silver. Then you need Lisa Pavelka Magic Gloss UV Resin. There are lots of resins out there. This is our favorite for this kind of project. You need a glue stick, clear packing tape, a toothpick, scissors, and finally you need a photo. To make the photo pendant, the first thing we did was print out our picture and we cut it out. To cut it out, we made a little template that was slightly smaller than the inside of the bezel. And we used that to cut out our picture. And now what we want to do is laminate the photo using packing tape. To do that, I'm just going to take a piece of packing tape and lay it down face up and put the picture face down right on the middle of that packing tape, just like that. And I'm gonna rub it in a little bit like that. Then I'll grab a second piece of packing tape and I'll put that right on top of the other piece. And I'm gonna burnish that a little bit with my finger. And then what I wanna do is burnish the edges of the photo. And I'm just gonna use my fingernail to do that. The reason why we're doing this is we don't want the resin to seep into the laminate and into the photo once we pour the resin because it will make the photo look cloudy and dark and, and we want it to be nice and bright and clear. So I'm going all the way around my photo heart here and making sure that the tape is nice and sealed. And now I can use my scissors to just cut that out. And instead of cutting right to the edge of the photo, I'm going to leave a little bit of an edge of that sealed packing tape all the way around the photo. We like to use these tiny scissors because it's good for detail work like this. So you can get into that little edge of the heart with the point of the scissors. And I'm just going to get this little bottom part, this bottom edge. And now I'm going to recheck and make sure that I've got a nice sealed edge all the way around. Like that. That looks pretty good. And what I want to do is make sure that this fits inside my bezel before I try to glue it in. Because I might need to trim it a little more. See how it's kind of not quite fitting? It needs to be a good fit. I can see that I've got a little too much of my laminate edge on this side. So I'm going to just trim that a little bit. I'm just going to test that, make sure it fits in there nicely, and it does. I'm going to use my toothpick to pop it back out. There we go. And now what I want to do is glue it inside the bezel. So to do that, I'm going to flip my photo over, and again, I'm going to check and make sure it's nice and sealed. It looks good. And we're just using a glue stick for this. We're going to put glue all over the whole back. And the reason why you want to glue the photo in is even if it fits nicely inside the bezel, you want it glued down because once we pour the resin, we don't want any air bubbles to come up from under the photo. So we've got glue all the way around, the, all over the back of the photo. And now we'll just pop that in to the bezel like that. And then I'm going to use my fingernail again to make sure it's nice and glued down. I can use my toothpick to make sure the edges are all the way pressed down, again, so we don't have any air bubbles. We're going to let that glue set up for just a few minutes, and then we'll be ready to pour our resin. We let our glue set up, and now we're ready to add our resin. This is Lisa Pavelka's Magic Gloss, and what we're going to do is start right in the center of our bezel and just squeeze some on. And you want to start with some, not a ton. So we're going to do a pretty big dollop there in the middle, but not a ton because you can always add more. And the idea with this resin is it's going to set up in the sunshine. It's the UV that makes it set up. And then it's going to create a little glass dome over the top. It makes it look very finished. I'm sort of tipping um, the bezel around to make the resin go all the way to the edge. You can see I've got a big bubble there. I'm going to show you how to get that out. That's what our toothpick is for. 
So to get the bubbles out, what you want to do is just poke them with a toothpick like this, anywhere you see bubbles, and I'm making sure that the resin's all the way up to my edge, all the way around, but you don't want it to go over the edge. And you want to make sure you're working on a level surface. I'm realizing that my pendant has a little loop on it that was making the pendant not lie flat on my table. So I'm holding it up a little bit so that it's level because the resin will want to level. It'll level itself on its own. There we go. And now what we want to do is take our pendant outside. Make sure that you place your pendant on a level surface. We actually have a little tiny level that we use for this kind of craft project. It has to be a level surface to make sure that the resin cures level and let it cure in direct sunlight. It has to be direct sunlight and that'll take 15 to 20 minutes. Our resin is all set up. You can see we've got a nice glassy surface here that's hard, just like glass. And now we have a beautiful personalized photo pendant that would be great actually as a pendant or it could be a keychain. So many different things you could do with a personalized photo pendant. To make the keychain, we have a lobster clasp keyring, three flathead head pins in silver. We have some silver chain that has large open links. We've got some beads here. These are faceted crystal beads in pink, crystal, and lime. We have two silver spacer beads that are textured, they're kind of a tie silver. We have five daisy spacers, also silver, and five round spacer beads. Then we have our picture pendant. This is a photo pendant that we made in a heart bezel. And for tools, we have wire cutters and round nose pliers. To make our personalized photo key ring, we're gonna turn these beads and spacers into some beaded dangles and attach them to a piece of chain and then assemble all of that together on our lobster key ring. So to start, we're gonna take our chain and we're gonna cut four lengths of chain. To do that, what, what I mean is we wanna end up with four lengths of chain to work with. So to do that, we're gonna take our wire cutters and cut right through this fifth length of chain. And what I like to do is look for the where they've soldered it together, which looks like it's at this top part. And then you just cut right through it with your wire cutters. And then if it helps, you can use pliers to sort of wiggle that opening a little bit. And then pull off your four lengths of chain. And we're going to set that aside for now and then work on our bead dangles. We went ahead and set aside our beads and little spacers into little clusters based on how we want to design our little bead dangles. And we'll start by making the shortest one first. To do that, we've got a head pin and we're going to slide on one of our round silver spacer beads, followed by a daisy spacer. Then add our sort of Thai silver, Tibetan silver bead that has this wonderful texture to it. Then add another daisy spacer and a round bead. And then to make this into a dangle, we're gonna make a wrap loop in the top of our head pin wire here. To do that, we're gonna use our round nose pliers. We're gonna grasp the wire right above that last bead, bend the wire 90 degrees, I'm bending it toward me. Then I'm going to reposition the plier to the top of that bend and I'm going to wrap the wire up and over that top jaw, reposition the pliers to the bottom jaw, and then pull the wire all the way around to finish that loop. So you see that there's a finished loop there. And now before I close that loop, I want to feed it on to my chain. I want to make sure that I'm feeding it on to the second link of the chain. I'm doing that because this first link is going to be what's attached to our key ring. And then our bead dangles are going to each hang from one of the lengths of the chain. So I'm going to take my chain, the second link, and I'm going to nestle it into the loop that I just made, like that. And now I'm going to close this loop or wrap this loop. To do that, I'm going to grasp across the loop with my pliers, take the tail of my head pin, and pull it around 
the neck that I just made of the head pin two times like that and then cut the, the tail that's there, the little end, with my wire cutters. And you want to cut it as close as you can to the project without cutting through your project. I've got a little bit of a tail there, so I'm just going to flatten that tail down with my round nose pliers, like that. And there's our first bead dangle on our second link of the chain. And we're ready to make our next bead dangle. And we're going to do the same thing we just did we're going to feed on our beads in the order that we want and then make a wrapped loop. So for this bead dangle, I'm starting with our round bead. I'm adding a daisy spacer, our pink faceted crystal rondel, followed by a round bead. And now I'm going to make another wrapped loop just like I did before. I'm going to grasp the wire of the head pin right above that last bead bend the wire 90 degrees toward me, reposition the pliers to the top of that bend, pull the wire around the top jaw of my pliers, and I'm letting the pliers work as a mandrel, and now I'm repositioning the pliers to the bottom jaw and finishing pulling that wire all the way around to make a loop. Now we want to hang our this dangle off the third link of our chain, and I'm going to look at it and see where our dangles are already. We've got a dangle off this um, second link of the chain. It's on that side, so I think I'm going to do it off the other side of our third link. Nestle it down in there. And now I'm going to take my round nose pliers, grasp across the loop like that, and then wrap that loop two times with that tail. And this is just a regular jewelry making technique that we're using here, making wrapped loops. This is how you would make any kind of dangle for a pair of earrings or any kind of dangle on a bracelet or necklace. Same technique. I'm going to use my wire cutters. And I'm actually using the flush side of my cutters to cut. Um, I'm putting that side against my work and cutting. And that way you don't end up with a pointy end, which Matters more for jewelry, but you also don't want a pointy end on a keychain. And I'm going to use my pliers to mash the little end down because I've got a little bit of an end sticking out there. And there's our second dangle on our keychain. And now I'm going to make the third one, and this is the longest one. I'm going to start with a round bead on my head pin. And we're using a little round bead there because if you use a bead that has a large hole, it could slide right over that head pin. So we're starting with our round bead. Then we'll put on a daisy spacer, just like we did on the others, followed by one of our crystals. I think I'll do the green crystal at the bottom. Then I'm going to put this cool Tibetan silver looking bead in the middle, followed by our clear faceted rondel, and then our last daisy spacer. And then we're going to make a wrapped loop same technique once again. Grasp the wire above that last spacer bead, bend it 90 degrees, reposition the pliers, wrap the wire around the top jaw, reposition the pliers to the bottom jaw, and pull it around to make a, a loop. Then I'm actually going to keep holding on to it this time because I think that's a little easier. I'm going to feed the last link of my chain making sure it's the right one, yep, onto that loop and nestle it down in the loop. Then I'm going to use my round nose pliers to grasp the wire or grasp the loop across, pull the tail toward me, and wrap that um, around the neck two times. And it's a little bit shorter this time because I added more beads and things, but still got it there. Then I'm going to cut using my wire cutters. And now I've got all of my dangles on my chain. And now we're ready to just assemble our key ring. And to do that, I'm going to slide the last link of the chain onto the key ring. And actually, it's easier to kind of open it with your fingernail like that and then slide it on. 
slide it all the way around just like when you put a key on a key ring like that and now we want to slide on our photo pendant this is just a photo pendant that we made of our niece our grandniece who's darling we're going to do it the same way just slide it on like you would slide on a key, a key onto a keychain all the way around like that and there is our darling personalized photo key ring with our beaded dangles mm -hmm.